Hello guys, welcome to the stream. Uh, for once, well, I think we're actually starting on time. Uh, last week we had a bit of a disaster, everything seems to be going okay so far. So, usual checks for a live stream, let me know if you guys can hear me and see me mainly. Um, and then we're going to crack on with the cook. You can see 17 or 18 of you guys online so far. Uh, Barbecue Life UK, how's it going Tom? Uh, John Raffle, looking forward to seeing this. Hopefully for all the right reasons. Hopefully we don't have too many disasters, same as we did last week. Uh, it's all a good learning curve. Kev, uh, hi James. Hope all going well today. A lot better than last week. <laughs> uh, Dodgy Cooking, afternoon. How's it going mate? So obviously today we are, there's quite a few use pouring in now. Barbecue Life Ireland, how's it going Leon? Uh, Nell Collins, hello. All good, loud and clear, Dutch cooking, all good. Excellent, let's hope it stays that way. I will put a disclaimer right now, it's gonna crash at some point, I know fine right it is, because it's probably gonna be around an hour of a stream, maybe slightly longer. Um, so let me know in the comments, are you guys cooking along, or are you just here to watch this crash and burn? Let me know what you're doing. We are gonna get going pretty quick, I just wanna give a few people a chance to get on before we start. So we're doing pork souvlaki today, and it's uh, my Trigger, James 5 and 5. Um, doing pork souvlaki, it's what you guys voted for for our first cook along. So this is the first time we've done this proper step-by-step -step cooking on a live stream. Fingers crossed it works. But uh, we're doing pork souvlaki, we're going to make a homemade tzatziki to go with it, and we're going to grill up a few peppers. Um, and then last night, actually on Instagram Live, I made uh, some of the homemade pita breads to go along with it. And as I said in the recipe, if you've looked at it, you don't need pita breads. You can do you shop bought, you can make your own, you can use flatbreads, you can use wraps, sub rolls, whatever you want. The meat's the main part of this. Dutchy cooking, you're only here for the entertainment. You're here to laugh at me, is that what you're saying? Barbecue Life Ireland's eating chicken wings. Why'd you tell me that, mate? So, hope you all have a drink. We are going to crack on. We're only three minutes in, so we're not too bad. Um, so, let me know if you guys aren't cooking along or you're cooking anything yourself today. And also, I'm keen to know where everybody's tuning in from. I know where some of you are from, clues in the names. Barbecue Life Ireland and Barbecue Life UK. Uh, Barbecue Life UK. Not cooking today, shack reconfiguring. Ooh, I, I love going through the shells in the shack and moving stuff about or adding new bits on. Uh, dodgy cooking, laugh with you. Good man. Wouldn't want to think you're laughing at me. So I've actually, I'm going to run through. I've tried to set this up so that I can pinpoint um, exactly what we're doing. So I've tried to set up a couple of different camera angles. Now, they, they aren't the best camera angles in the world, but so... There's one zooming in a little bit closer to the chopping board whenever we're doing stuff here, and then I've tried to get something a little bit closer to the barbecue. So hopefully those will help out a little bit. Graham Bell, I have some wrapped onion rings. He sent me a picture of them on Instagram beforehand. I got old only slagging wrapped onion rings. Gotta love them. Graham Bell's up in the north coast. Uh, Sean Kelly, hi James, do you have a bigger front table now? Wasn't it originally the same size as the back table? Uh, it was originally far smaller than the back table. It was only two boards deep and it was about three foot high. It was only really a, a thing to set bits and pieces on. But I needed a proper counter at the front to work on, especially for doing videos like this. Uh, Brian McKenzie from East Yorkshire, Dutchy Cooking, Nottinghamshire. Uh, David Patton, I'm for down your road. You can come up and help me. <laughs> uh, now Collins off fed chicken drumsticks and steaks in the Weber, ready for some tips on pork. Kev, risky. Right, I think we're going to crack on. There's a few of you guys on. We are starting with the pork. As I mentioned, we need to get this into uh, a marinade. It's only going to marinade for sort of 20 to 30 minutes because it's quite an acidic marinade. You don't want to leave it in there too long, it'll just fall apart. Uh, so. I will change my camera angle to bring you in a little bit. Try and keep this out of the road. I'm going to put a glove on too. 
So it's quite quick to prepare. I have two pork fillets here today. Uh, one of them I've already taken the silver skin off. Uh, the second one I've left on just to explain what I'm talking about. So this is the one I've removed all silver skin from it. Um, there's nothing really left on there. There's a few little bits of fat which I'm not that worried about. But as you can see from here, this one here still has the silver skin on it. So if you're using tenderloin, as long as you get that main silver skin off, that's the worst bit. It goes a bit chewy. You don't really want to be eating it. So just take a knife, run it underneath all the way along. And take it off. Try and leave as much meat on there as possible. Now, I had said in the recipe that if there were some of you that weren't able to get your hands on tenderloin, you can use regular pork loin, which is fine. But if it is a big fat cap on it, I might trim that down a little bit. Uh, hold on, I've took your comments off here, so I can't actually see what you guys are saying. Yep, Stevie G from over the road's on. How's it going? Are you cooking along? I know you didn't vote for Suvlaki. It was quite a divisive vote. People were uh, a little bit upset whenever certain things didn't win. Um, the chicken burger came a very close second and those that voted for chicken burger were not happy when it turned out it was actually souvlaki. Garf. I haven't got my usual black gloves, these white things and their stuff sticks to them like something crazy. That one's not looking too bad, another little bit there. And I'm going to try and ignore the chat as much as possible so we don't get waylaid. But if you guys have questions about what we're doing, put them in there. Because in between sort of each step, I'll take a break and I'll try and answer some questions and stuff. Um, okay, the rest of this one doesn't look too bad. I'm not too worried. There's a bit of silver skin hiding in there. I'm not too worried if there's little veins of fat and stuff running through it. The fat should burn off. Not burn off, but melt down. Uh, so as I had in the recipe, if you're cooking for two people, one tenderloin's enough. To be honest, I could probably eat a tenderloin on my own, they're not that big. But, oh, come on. So, if there are two tenderloins, uh, we're cooking for four, plus it's always nice to have a little bit of leftovers. Um, so I, I'm i doing two today, if you're only doing one, the marinade and stuff is the exact same, uh, they don't need an awful lot of marinating. So what we're going to do with these is cut them up into smaller chunks. This is quite a thin one, um, this one's a little bit thicker but I had somebody contact me and ask if they didn't or couldn't get their hands on skewers, what could they do? So if you're doing that and you don't have skewers, cut them a little bit thicker and then you can manage them in the grill a bit easier. So I'm just going to go down through with my knife, slide this one out of the way, and cut them into, so it's the full width of the pork loin, but I'm cutting them quite thin, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch thickness. So the morning is quite a strong one that to the side. Check the comments, stuff still going. And then same with this one, this one's a little bit thinner but I'm still going to cut them to the same thickness. So the more even you are with your thickness, the easier they will cook. Okay, then on with the ingredients for the marinade. I'm just going to go back into this tray for the marinade. So we have the main liquid for these in, uh, this marinade. As I said, it's quite acidic. Uh, so um, first of all, we're going off with oil. So there's 125 mils of oil. You can do this in a bowl or a tray. It doesn't really matter. And then the same again with... Uh, this is white wine vinegar. If you couldn't get white wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar is more than enough, it's fine. 
Let's add that in. Then we're going in with the zest and the juice of half a lemon. And in here I have roughly two tablespoons of um, two tablespoons of thyme leaves, two tablespoons of rosemary, and uh, around a clove of garlic, all smashed up. So go ahead and add them in. And I'm going to take my glove off for this bit. And we're going to go in with a little bit of salt and pepper. Stick another glove on. CBG, what's your take on medium rare tenderloin? Uh, medium rare, I won't be too fast on. I don't take mine all the way to 75. Usually it'll go uh, sort of about 68 ish, is about as low as I would normally take it. I don't think there's any need for it any less. These are uh, good quality, like rare breed tenderloins, but still, I don't think I would take mine lower. But I know there's people out there that do. So, our Marnie is all ready. You can give that all a quick mix about, just to spread the leaves and the garlic out through it, and then we're going to go in with our tenderloin. Just spread that out through your marinade and toss it around. Now, because there's vinegar in here, don't panic if your pork starts to go white. Uh, it's just the, the vinegar sort of starting to get into it. So once that is all covered in the marinade, make sure it's pressed down flat so it's all sitting in it. As I said, vinegar in this is gonna, especially with such a lean cut of meat, is really gonna eat into it. Uh, so we don't need it in there for that long. Ditch my glove. <coughs> um, right, so I'm gonna stick this into the fridge. We're gonna leave this for about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. It doesn't need an awful lot of time. That's why I cut them tenderloins a little bit thinner. Uh, it's gonna give them a nice coating on the outside. While I stick it in the fridge, if you have any questions, stick them into the chat and I'll be back in two seconds. And I'm back. I could really do with uh, a fridge out in the shack, but I don't really know where I would put it. Uh, right, let me zoom me back out a little bit. That's better. So was that all simple enough? Is everyone happy enough with that sort of first step? Dale Turner, medium rare, near as bad as eating onions. You have to eat onions, especially if they're wrapped in bacon. Okay. So while that is marinating, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the barbecue setup. Hopefully you've all got your barbecues lit already. Um, we're cooking this mostly over direct. So give me a second and I will move these over to the barbecue. So I'm using the kettle today. Trusty old kettle. Haven't done it um, in a long time. So I'm going to have to get the Weber brand moving the lid off here. Uh, it's set up for two zone cooking, so all the coals are at the back. I'm using the charcoal baskets, but you don't need to. <coughs> you can just put the coals directly. <coughs> Pardon me, hold on, we got a drink of beer. So, coals are all at the back. That's going to give us our area to grill or skewers over. And then we have an indirect zone at the front. Uh, in the right zone, we're going to heat up the breads I made last night and stuff, and plus it gives us an area to move stuff to at the back. Temperature wise, don't be too fussy, as long as it's sitting maybe around 200, 180 to 200. Uh, I don't tend to worry that much about temperatures whenever we're grilling, that more comes into effect whenever it's roasting. Close that back up. 
and now I think we need to go and get on with the Satsiki. So let me just bring his bag out. So, oh, safety first. We'll change chopping boards. Alright, nice clean chopping board. We end up causing any problem. Stevie G, is that a persistent cough? No, that's a, a lack of beer cough. Sorry, mate. <laughs> right, I uh, need that. And so for the satsugi, first thing we need to do is the cucumber and get it ready. Um, give me a second. My camera's got a little bit dark here. I'll fix it for you. It's been raining on and off here. I think I can actually hear rain on the roof again. Uh, all morning. Ba -ba -ba. Right, we're back. Uh, does tenderloin not dry out like thigh meat as opposed to breast meat, which can? Uh, tenderloin is incredibly lean, so you just need to be careful how you're cooking it. Again, marinating it keeps a little bit in there, and then also, um, the because when I'm cooking it to 60, I don't tend to take it all the way to 75 because I think it can dry out. Uh, but that little bit of marinating in there helps, and then just not taking it as high a temperature. Good quality pork, um, as I said, 60, it's more than fine with it. So, I don't need to zoom you in for this bit, but half a cucumber uh, for the satsugi, we're just going to peel it and then we need to grate it using the box grater oh. barbecue life ireland i'm cheating on a few steps what do you mean cheating have you just went out and bought pork sudvaki somewhere you can get tzatziki or hummus you can't get Start seeking a grease and hummus anymore. Why not, Ted? Uh, saying that, it's been a, a year since I've been over there. I didn't have hummus, but I'm almost certain I had satsiki, but maybe it's changed. Maybe it's just because I can't travel to Greece at the minute. Double dip recession. I walked into that one, didn't I? Ah, <laughs> uh, nice one. Right, cucumber is peeled rid of all this junk can't believe you got me with that one Ted shocking uh, right regular box grater doesn't really matter how you don't want to shred it too fine but uh, we just do it enough that we can get it down we need to get a lot of the moisture out of this so Ah, uh, you got me, Ted. Thanks. <laughs> you know the worst thing? I've actually heard that one before. And here's me thinking you're being all serious. Unbelievable. So, I've said this. I made it to Siggy in a recent Gyros video. And I had said that I wasn't particularly a fan of it a few years ago because... Uh, all just tasted very watery to me. So this is a recipe uh, that actually gets a lot of that moisture out of there and it gives it a slightly better flavour. So I'm not leaving loads in the box grater. So it's probably hard to tell on the camera, but there's already loads of moisture floating around in the bottom of that bowl. And once that goes into the sauce, it just makes a watery mess. It's no nice. Fizzwanger, cucumber should be peeled, thinly sliced, and slung in the bin. Well, then we couldn't make satsiki with it. So we need to get the moisture out of this. So what we're going to do is add in roughly a tablespoon of, and I'll add more moisture, but a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. We'll go splash more. Again, apple cider will do. It's not really for flavour. And a good grating of salt as well. Okay. 
give that all a mix around just to get the vinegar and the salt mixed through it. We're going to leave it there for three to four minutes while we do everything else. And that's going to start to pull a lot of that moisture out of the cucumber and then we can get rid of it. It doesn't go into the sauce. Dutchy cooking, can't stand cucumbers. I'm the same, like, on a normal day, I don't particularly enjoy eating cucumbers, but uh, for something like this, they're definitely good. So, while that is doing its thing, we can get on with the rest of the sauce. Uh, the main base for it is Greek yogurt. Again, as I said, if you can't get Greek yogurt, natural yogurt will be fine. Um, it just won't be quite as thick. And there's very few ingredients really need to go into this. Uh, Stumpy Trigger, I think you need a sink. I need a sink and a fridge. So we are going to go in with. Uh, this is a bit of clove of garlic, which I've actually added a little bit of salt to and just mashed it down to make sure it's like a puree. It's quite a, quite a thick consistency. Because you don't want chunks through this, you want the garlic flavour to mix through it. So go ahead and add that in. So many dishes to do later on. Somebody might come around and give me a hand with them. Uh, after that then, need a little bit of oil. So around three tablespoons. I'm not measuring it out, I can't be bothered. Yeah, looks all right. And then we just need salt and pepper. Once this is done, we'll taste it and see if it uh, needs any extra. Stevie G, go team cucumber. So, salt in there. And plenty of pepper. And just give that all a mix through <coughs> to mix the oil through the yogurt. Oil and yogurt sounds disgusting, doesn't it? But it works, trust me. So that was olive oil I was using. Um, you can use a good quality rapeseed oil as well if you want. That's everybody else saying. And we'll give a few of you on. How you all getting on with yours? Are you keeping up with the steps? Or maybe you can't type in the chat because you are cooking along. That's the relax. We've got all afternoon to get this done. Or at least until the laptop blows up again. So once that's all mixed up, that's it ready for the cucumber. But we need to squeeze as much of the moisture out of that as possible. So another bowl and we have a clean dishcloth. Make sure and use a clean one. I keep this one. This one is nearly exclusively used for squeezing out cucumbers. Which is a strange reason to have a tea towel. Oh, I've just done that all over my laptop. Right. So, all your grated cucumber in here. And then, gather up the corners of the tea towel. You can only see it running out. And just squeeze it out. Drinking a cold beer, watching you sweat. Who's sweating? I don't start sweating whenever that thing says no data being received. That's whenever I start to sweat. Will sweat. Will Swales just about keeping up. If you do need me to slow down, just put it into the comments. I'm just worried about getting everybody their dinner on time. So squeeze as much as you can out of that cucumber. The more you get out of it, the better it'll be. Mark Higgins, not cooking along unfortunately, but I'll be down for some shortly. I'll help you with the washing up. We mean help, you're doing the washing up if you're coming down here to get fed. <laughs> uh, Dutchy cooking, good tip for squeezing moisture out of cucumbers and potatoes for hash browns, potato ricer. Yeah, good idea. Probably with a little bit less messy too. Right. I think that's as much out of that as we need. But, you're never going to be able to see that. Uh, there's like half a bowl of moisture just come out of that one little bit of cucumber uh, so that would have been all mixed in through there making the whole sauce just taste of cucumber which is no good so if you open that out 
you're just left with this little ball of cucumber and that can go straight into the tzatziki pop that in right okay rid of that and that and then break down the cucumber just mix it through the sauce so it should stay nice and thick and creamy if it hasn't then you haven't put enough elbow grease into getting your moisture out of the cucumber So how did everybody get on with getting yeast? Did everybody make the flatbreads themselves or have they made their own version of the flatbreads? Or have you all just gone the lazy route and went for wraps and bread rolls? So we, I think, do we, we might have one sachet left or else we used it maybe for these flatbreads. But I think Tesco's have it back in stock, well, at least close to me they do anyway. So. Nobody will be buying any until I get a chance to get down and get more. So that's the tzatziki ready to go under the kebabs. Still nice and thick, still creamy, not watery. We do need to taste it, however. Yeah. Um... A little bit more pepper. It's um, I like a little bit more heat, or like pepper heat coming through on it. But the garlic's good, and this is one of these things that gets better. Um, sort of if you keep it in the fridge for a day or so, but you make it all fresh, still tastes good now. But the garlic flavor really mellows out through it. You get that sort of less of a raw taste of garlic from it. So I'm calling that good. I'll leave that to the side. Mark, call down anytime you want, mate, and starting these dishes. Barbecue Life Ireland, Lazy Road, no yeast in Tesco's. I don't know, like. We got an email out from them saying that they got everything back in stock. Uh, there is still loads of toilet roll now. Uh, everybody's wised up a bit and they don't actually need it. CVG, is this the marinade? No, that's the set seat game. We've already done the marinade. You were too slow. The marinade is just mix all them ingredients together, cube up your tenderloin and throw it into it. And it's going to stay in there for uh, about 20 minutes. Uh, then I keep tab of what time we put that in. I know the stream's in 37 minutes already, we didn't start straight away. But we'll give it another five minutes to catch my breath and have a beer. So was anybody on the live stream on Instagram last night? Me and uh, I was on doing the flatbreads and then Jim jumped in. He was doing steaks at home, so I was only slagging. So he uh, jumped in and we had a bit of a chat for half an hour or an hour nearly. Um, it was a good crack. So Jim is actually moving over onto YouTube now as well. So uh, I think at some point I'm going to have to head up the road to him. We'll try and get a, a few joint videos done. Uh, I'm yet to go up and actually see his shack. We don't live too far away from each other. Mark Higgins, I'll bring you an IPA. Oh, that's all Corona stuff. This is my last bottle. Graham Bell, Jim sounded pissed. I don't know, he was on the wine, but uh, about a sunstroke from his sunburnt head. I don't think he's in here today, so I can say that. Can you let me know as well? The sun keeps coming in and out past the clouds. So uh, if the picture gets too bright or too dark, let me know and I shall fix it. Right, I'll run in and grab this pork, see what it's looking like, and then we can maybe go ahead and get them skewered up and get them onto the barbecue. Has to have been at least 20 minutes. Doesn't take that long for it to do its thing. Back in a second.
Okay, right. So the pork has gone a slightly greyish colour. Let me bring you in a bit closer for this part. Uh, as I say, don't worry, that's just the acids that are in there doing their thing. Um, so don't worry about that colour, it's completely natural, that's what we want. Uh, -bum -bum. So I have skewers, uh, these are long ones, you can use double pronged, you can use wooden ones, you can uh, use the big Russian ones, whatever you want, or as I said, slightly bigger pieces and then just do them directly on the grill. Uh, I will grab a glove and we'll start getting these skewered up. Keep closing down the chat here so I don't see if you guys are saying them. Green Bell, if we don't have skewers. Uh, yeah, like I say, just try and keep them chunks a little bit uh, bigger. They're probably still big enough you can set them onto the grill uh, without them falling through. Well, hopefully they are. Hopefully I haven't cut them up too small. Um, I say they should be grand. They're still, that's why I didn't cut the tenderloin lengthways so they're really small cubes you know, they're still uh, sort of decent sized pieces that will uh, set onto the barbecue so just grill them off that way uh, whenever we skewer these up we'll grab a skewer we're going to try and do them flat ways so rather than threading them on this way we're going to try and go through this way uh, it just keeps them flatter and then we're not going to cram the skewers too much either um, so just go in through the back and right up through the center of it. Now I say try and keep them relatively flat that way. I don't want them too thick and then we can set them onto the barbecue like that. So go through each of them. I don't know about your guys pork but you can already sort of see it opening up a little bit just with that vinegar doing its thing. You've all gone quiet again. I assume you're still there. I remember you're all just got your hands dirty with pork. So I think I have enough skewers here. Let me get two or three out of this. So that's all I'm going to put on to a single skewer. I don't want to cram them too tight because it just takes too much time for them to cook. Uh, so try and keep them a little bit flat and just lay that across there for now. Back on and do another one. Did everybody get tenderloin okay? Or was it um Ted Whitmore, it was good seeing you both have a laugh. Well it was definitely a laugh. We need to do it a bit more often. Uh I don't know, I I don't go live on Instagram barely at all. It's so much easier than doing it on YouTube, I can promise you that. Um, but for the sake of just going on hitting the button. Looking forward to a collab with Only Slagging. It'll definitely happen. We've been talking about it for years. I actually had a, an idea for a video for years to go up and shoot with Jim. And it's just never happened. Uh, but, 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 uh, one more bit. Yeah, so ingredients to this, I managed to get everything, which is probably good because I'm showing you guys, apart from peppers, and the missus headed to Tesco's for a few bits this morning, and she managed to come through and actually get me some peppers. Make sure I don't miss any bits here. I might actually get four skewers out of this. So there's already oil and stuff on here. Uh, so we don't need to oil the cooking grate, so we'll just give them a quick clean off. Mark, did I see you at a tent up in the backyard? Are you camping in the backyard tonight? I think I saw that on Instagram. Last one. What's new barbecue? Yo! Welcome mate. I hope you're not cooking along because you're a little bit late. You've got a bit of catching up to do. But if you're just here for a bit of chat, no problem. So I 
I think it's actually going to work out perfect for four skewers. You never really know. It just depends what size of tenderloins and stuff you get. And stab myself here. And the final piece. Have you guys got all yours done? Last night, mate, my wee man loves camping. So I do it right enough. Uh, these, you have to these days. We had the pull out in the backyard for the kids the other day. And the sun loungers and stuff out. So, again, as most people, we're not getting away on holiday this year. So it was nice to set up our own little holiday in the backyard. Only good thing is I had a shack. Feeling awful today, hence why no cooking. Why are you feeling awful? Are you hung over? Barbecue Life Ireland, this should work great on a rotisserie. Yeah, uh, really anything you can thread meat onto. Um, you could even try it with uh, loin of pork, which is a bit bigger. Uh, slice it down thinly, marinate it, and then uh, put it all on a little bit like uh, like tacos al pastor. Thread it on that way and just carve it off. So these are now good to go. Uh, we still have all those herbs and stuff on there, the oils on there. I can see plenty of lemon zest on them. So that's what's going to give us our, our coating and give us a bit of flavour. I'm going to take these off and I'm going to give the grates a quick scrub down. don't think so, but couldn't be 100%. <coughs> I'm scared taking that lid off every time. Does everybody know about the Weber brand? Usually it's whenever you're reaching over the barbecue to adjust your uh, vents at the bottom and you touch the inside of your arm off the bottom of the kettle, you end up with a brand mark on your arm. So, let's go down to the barbecue. So the grates are pretty clean, because I haven't used it in a long time. Don't say anything. Give them a quick rub off. Else that. that dread whenever you open a barbecue up you haven't used for a long time just to wonder what it's like underneath uh, well I have to admit my kettle wasn't in great condition but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be so let's back out a minute so is everybody ready to start cooking have they, their pork all skewered up You know, Leon, you've got me thinking with that rotisserie thing. I should have gave it a go. I'm mean, going to have to get a little bit more for next so we can give it a try. Uh, so we are ready to get these on. Whenever we first put them on, I'm hoping this doesn't smoke too much because there's oil in this. If that drips down into the coals, it's going to give a bit. Uh, then we are going to get some peppers prepared. We're just going to grill them off. Now that I actually have peppers. So I will set them over. I'm going directly above the coals. Got a bit of a sear on them. So we'll have that indirect zone. If things start getting a little bit too hot, we can uh, move them across into the indirect area. So we'll leave those be. Uh, You can see they're just all directly over the coals. There's no coals from sort of this point onwards. So uh, we're going to leave them on there, get a bit of a sear for a minute or two. And again, I'm going to put the vent there to try and draw heat away just to make sure they don't get too hot. Uh, but that'll pull air out to the other side of the barbecue and not flare up too much. Are these the Manx Vax skewers? No, they're not. I haven't got any of them yet. Uh, am I still on the actual barbecue? Or have I moved? Yeah, I haven't moved them on the barbecue. Um, the Manx Fax ones, I think Phil and Jim and all them guys have been using them, but no, these are just regular skewers. The, far, the Manx Fax ones are a lot longer and I think thicker as well. So I say it every time, but I really need to get a set of them. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on those. I'm going to set that down here. Um, my board over 
And the last thing to prepare is going to be peppers. So there's really nothing fancy. None of the breads I made last night. I've left my tongs in the house. Give me a second. Uh, with the peppers then, we are just going to take the tops off them and then take everything out of the inside and we're going to grill these just in sort of large chunks so my white garbage out of there and then for these I'm just going to run them the knife down the centre of them uh, just to leave them in larger chunks so I can handle them a bit better but we really just want to get them blistered up a little bit uh, over the coals flip them over uh, so yeah tops off the peppers uh, and then just take out that inside bit and about half white bits that are in there too uh, it's quite a big one so I'll maybe do it in half and then half again I get myself a good set of sharp knives. I'm going to take the hand off and sell some of these days. And seeds out. Mark Higgins, do you use your kettle much now? Somebody asked me this and it always makes me feel bad. No, I don't. I don't have cooked in the kettle for at least a year. Uh, but that's mostly, once you get a new grill, you want to try and use it as much as possible, just to try and see. Uh, I don't think we're ready yet. There's a nice sear on there. Yeah, whenever you get a new barbecue, you don't want to sort of use it once or twice, then throw it to the side and use something different. Uh, the, uh, so I've been trying to do as many different cooks on the Kamado Joe as I can. I think I've pretty much covered most things now on it. So as I said, this is cleaned off. I'm going to do my best to um, use it a little bit more often now because I do feel bad for it was sort of my original, my first love, should I say. And now I've kind of neglected it. So, I managed to do it without spilling everything on the ground. Irish Pete, how's the lads? Any chance you can go back to the beginning, James? Just back from the shops. Looks great, we'll definitely have to try these sometime. Yeah, I'll give them a go. The video, well, somebody had asked, obviously some people are busy, so they weren't able to cook along, but uh, this video will go up onto the channel um, after it's finished. Sometimes it takes YouTube a little minute or two before they can actually upload it, but it will be there at some point, I promise. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, we have, I have wrapped my flatbreads in a little bit of foil. So these are the flatbreads we made last night. So they're just regular, these are homemade flatbreads or pita breads technically. So we're going to actually set them on the end of the right side just to warm them through a little bit. We don't need to go on just yet. So, move these too far. If you can see, there's there is a good little bit of colour and dripping everywhere. That's it. One sort of a few really charred edges. Don't want to go too far. Um, I 
bounce off of these skewers. I'm going to move this back one. The one right out at the edge here isn't uh, getting as much direct heat as the other ones, so. interest of even cooking we will swap it around a little bit what I got mine out last weekend and feel like I've rekindled the relationship I have a lot of making up to do I haven't spoke to mine in nearly a year so the only thing I really use it for is rotisserie cooking because I don't have the KJ rotisserie so I usually use the the kettle uh, but they, they are they're a good barbecue. I do like cooking on them. It's kind of like going back a little bit old school, but I do love cooking on the Kamado as well. So it is quite a a hard choice to make. It's not a hard choice to make, but it's a hard one to live with. So has everybody got their pork onto the grill? It's all cooking away. Remember, stick it on directly over the coals. Keep the lid down while uh, you're not anywhere near it. You should only lift the lid to check it once or twice and then uh, to flip it over. Uh, try not to leave the lid off because it's going to continue to cook um, when the lid's down. Even though it's only getting heat from the bottom, the ambient temperature is going to help cook a little bit faster. Everything seems to still be working good. Green Bell, cooking well, good man. Perfect time to have a bit of a beer. The beer situation is pretty poor in the house. Um, I have, this is my last Corona, and then we're into, um, I have a little bit of the Marsden's Amber Ale. Uh, so we're on to the Amber Ale after this is done. Will Swales smells amazing. Mine does or yours does? <coughs> I'm not sure these are getting a bit of even colour. So I need to move them about a well. Uh, they're okay. These ones here sell about a degree or two to go. So remember, we're going 68. Uh, I'm also going to set flat reds on at this point just to warm through. Um, we still want to rest the pork a little bit, so whenever we lift it off, the peppers aren't going to take that long to get a bit of char on them. So what we'll do is at that point then, we'll... Uh, once the skewers are lifted off or moved to the indirect side, we'll get the, the peppers on the char. So this one here, 68. Yeah. Good to go with that one too. the lid up, just let them finish off a little bit. Graham Bell. <laughs> and you bleep all chat about which barbecue. I only have one. Well you only need one. Uh, I talked about this recently too that any more than that's probably a bit of an extravagance but Whenever you love buying stuff and like new barbecues, you have to go for it. So you're cooking on a Master Touch, but KJ soon. See, you're the same, then you'll have a KJ and a Master Touch, and you'll be in the same position I am. Uh, Dale Turner, how much coals have you in there? Uh, how 
close are the coals to the meat? If that was me, they'd be burnt by now. Uh, so we use a chimney starter to measure them out. This is one of these yokes. So this is about two thirds of a chimney starter briquette. Uh, they are, they do sit pretty close to the charcoal in the master touch. Uh, so uh, they will get a bit of a sear, but the thing is to keep the lid on so that stops it, the flames and fire all coming up. That's what burns your food, uh, doesn't sear it. And uh, that's what ends up black and smoked. As I say, that'll probably take us off and it'll be black and smoked. So I would imagine these are probably good to go. This one over. There's always one that's stubborn and doesn't want to finish off. This is this one. That's going to give us enough room to get a few peppers and stuff on around it while it's finishing off. So with these, I'm not doing anything to them. Uh, I just set them on to try and blister the skins up a little bit, and it'll start to soften them down. Once the moisture in there starts to sort of boil and come out, that's what makes them soft. Uh, so your chopped peppers. Doesn't matter what colour of peppers. If I had my preference, I would say yellow and red. But I don't have my preference. So we'll just set some of them on. Skin side down to start them off. Start to sort of fizz and crackle a little bit. Still warming up nicely. Get your lid back on, always important. And I'm going to go and grab a cloth, give us a wipe down because then we can serve up on that. Peppers direct, yes, sorry, mate. Uh, directly over the coals, uh, they don't take long, so just keep an eye on them and flip them about as you need to. Hold on, I'll see if I can bring the camera down in a bit. Uh, number three, I'm gonna give you an idea. Um, just leave them. I've moved the skewers that are ready or about ready, they're around 60. I've moved them over to the indirect side, just sort of keep them warm and they'll finish off a degree or two. Uh, I suppose I could check this one. 68, 67, 68. So skewers are good to go. Leave them on the indirect side for a little while, just keep them warm uh, while the peppers cook. And move back to chat here. Uh, so just keep them spaced out over your coals. You can do this with other stuff, you can use onions and all sorts, but uh, peppers are quite a nice one to go with it. So they're only starting to blister now, I'll give them an hour second or two. I personally, I'm not too worried about blagging pepper skins. I think as long as they go nice and soft, you can dice them up, put them in, and gives that sort of nice charred flavour. Uh, I'm going to take these dishes into the house. The missus has offered to wash them, and I'm not refusing that offer. So, give me two seconds. Fine, thing.
Hi. How are we all doing? Close chat again. Here we go, another. So, if you can see, a little bit of char marks on them. Keep moving them about, and you want to do the undersides of them too. Skins can handle a bit more heat, so that's why we sort of throw them skin side down first. How's it going mate? Only Corona beer under the circumstances. It's cheap, very cheap at the moment. It's also nearly finished, which isn't good. Uh, you can see the flatbreads are warming up a little bit. Yeah, they're good. Uh, flatbreads, if you have breads that are a little bit stale, you can sprinkle a little bit of water over them and wrap them up in foil. Uh, and that will uh, sort of soften them down a little bit again as they warm up. Uh, close the lid and get the peppers the last few minutes. Cormac, love the shack by the way. Yeah, it's my little happy place. <laughs> it's, um, I've had it for what, nearly two years now I think. And it's 100%, it's the best thing I've ever built. Uh, keep changing little bits uh, here and there. Um, someday I will probably do a complete revamp and uh, change up the colours and stuff a little bit. Just don't like leaving stuff for too long. So I think we're almost there. Everybody else in the same boat? How's everybody else's pork looking? What temperatures are we sitting at? I think I forgot something. It's usually at this point in the recipe where I turn around and see something sitting that I forgot to put in. Still need to light up, so hurry up. <laughs> Nearly there, mate. So the peppers have all softened down quite nicely. I'm going to take these pork skewers off. Uh, we know they're ready, so we'll just leave them to the side. have a nice little bit of colour on them. They have shrunk up quite a bit too. Um, but so a nice bit of colour on the tops of them. You don't want to take it too far with them. And check the peppers again. They're all nice and soft. Like losing one into the coals, which is the usual story. And Peppers a little bit of salt over the top to season them. Lift off these breads. And we're going to set everything that everybody can see it. That's going to block the view too much. Nice and warm, still nice and soft. That's what we want. Shout out to Charlie. So, if anybody doesn't know, Stevie G is my uh, brother in law and cousin in law. It's a weird one. But uh, he's saying that Charlie's running. Hello, Charlie, how are you? Come out into the backyard and shout hello. I'll listen out for you. That's one of Stephen's wee fellas. He's got ton boys too. Cute as buttons, but he's bound to be a tired man. Later this year, I plan to build one, and I'll be on at you for a few tips. No problem. There are a few tips on the channel as well. You can watch the videos, but 
Uh, anytime Cormac give me a shout, I'm happy enough to talk you through what I've done. Some people think this was a, a master feat to build, it definitely wasn't. It, um, it is the most basic shack you can get. So our peppers are all nice and charred and blackened. We're lifting them off. So if you can kind of see, they're all blistered. They're not too far gone that they, they just taste burnt. Uh, but you definitely want a nice sort of bit of bubbling and charring on there. All done. I can hear you, Charlie. All right, so are we all at this stage where we're ready to start serving up? I'm gonna get rid of these, just get them out of the way. And have our flatbread. Mark Higgins, I'm planning a shack for years and have a perfect spot at the new house, but unfortunately it's on hold at the minute. Yeah, that's crap. Uh, yeah, I can hear you, Charlie. Right, so let me know how we're going. Are we all here? We can all hear him. There. Everybody can hear you, Charlie. <coughs> I've run out of beer. Oh, there's a bit left. I knew this microphone was sensitive, but I didn't realize it was that sensitive. Uh, with the peppers, I'm going to slice them up. Uh, nobody wants to eat a whole whack of pepper like that. So just flip them over, and with a sharp knife, just cut them into strips or chunks or dice them, do whatever you want. But strips, I guess, here, I think, tend to work better in a wrap. They're nice and soft, so they cut pretty easily. need a set of decent knives. I think that's going to be my next barbecue investment. Don't necessarily want expensive fancy knives but just ones that are sharp and worth keeping. Oh, peppers smell amazing. I was like grilled peppers. They're, uh, they're pretty simple but I've done cold roasted peppers before. They're even better. If you mix them through the pastas and stuff. So you just chuck the whole pepper into the coals and uh, eat it from there. So come on, you just need to let me know. Are you ready to play it up with me or am I eating before you guys are? Teflon fingers yet that chefs have. Right, we're good to go. Dick knives can't go wrong. Dick knives? I've never heard of them. I must look them up, Leon. An integral part of barbecue is a beer. It is indeed, mate. Right, I'm gonna plate. I'll just hit my microphone. I'm gonna plate one of these up. Hopefully, all you guys are at the same stage as I am. We haven't forgot everything. So, sauce, tzatziki sauce, all made up, ready to go. Still nice and creamy. It's not sitting full of cucumber juice uh, or pork. So, we need to get it off. Pork is good to go. So the way I'm going to do this is put on my wrong glove. Mark Evans got in late, been rushing about, daft trying to catch up. Just flipping <laughs> pork, everything else ready and waiting. Good man. Sorry I came in late, but as I say I had to just start at some point. Uh, right, we're going to go down with a little bit of tzatziki to start with. Just lay it along the centre of the flatbread. Add plenty in there, it's the nicest bit of the dish. Ok, 
Okay. Then we'll go on with a few peppers. I don't know if peppers are really in the traditional Greek tzatziki, but or Greek uh, souvlaki. I forgot the name of it there. Lots of butchers like them. Well, I say I know Nesbits have bits and pieces as well that um, most chefs and stuff use. They're not Instagram worthy knives, but I, I don't, couldn't care less as long as they're sharp. Right. So once you have your flatbread, your tzatziki on there, and your grilled peppers in, you can just place your skewer on top of it, close around, and hopefully, I should loosen this off first, pull out, and I lost a bit. So it just keeps, you from making a mess of your hands, like I did. I lost that bit. That's them ready to eat. Just fold them over in half. Some people will wrap them up uh, just to hold them all together. But um, is that spoon hot, James? What spoon? I'm lost. <laughs> I'm going to dig in and give it a try. Not the most civilized thing to eat on camera, but how hot are these? I'm gonna try a bit of the pork on its own. The herbs in there are great. Lemon zest is quite subtle, but the great thing about tenderloin is it's so uh, tender in the middle, adding that sort of acidity to it has sort of broke it down even more. But the marinade on it is subtle, uh, but once you cook it on, with a warm wrap, yeah. As I said, if you can't make flatbreads, if you can't get yeast at the minute, you can use like the wee shop bought pit of pockets or fine, cram everything in there. Um, wraps are grand as well you can warm them up or toast them if you're doing the wraps i would build it up without toasting the wrap fold everything across or roll the whole thing up and then put it onto the barbecue and grill it for a few seconds the wrap will toast out around that and actually hold everything in place so it's not falling open like this but i'm not that worried if it falls open it still tastes good get the family fed yeah they're all standing in the kitchen waiting for it so Put on your glasses, Cormac. <laughs> so I think what Cormac was referring to is I had a heat-proof glove on to spin out the tzatziki. I knew I was going to grab the skewers and they're still, well, they've cooled down a bit now. And as I said, no chef's Teflon finger fingers. Well, swales, all done, tastes amazing. Cheers, James. Good man. Uh, if you have photos of it, if everybody hasn't devoured it yet, tag me in a couple of photos, see how it went. Uh, so we're going for an hour and 18 minutes, so we didn't start um, straight away, uh, we sort of let everybody jump on, so we're saying just over an hour we were able to put most of it together, fair enough the flatbreads take a little bit of time to do, but you could swap out, do the tzatziki the night before, and the time should be grand then making the flatbreads, the recipe is on the website for them, so if you're only joining in now and you do want to give this a try, uh, head over to food close up, I can't do a food close up Stevie G, head over to barbecue.com forward slash cook along and you can get the recipe for all this uh, somebody else saying green bell amazing I hope that means you've tasted it and it actually tastes good I'll see if I can one more swap of the camera angle get rid of this probably don't want to close up with this in here probably doesn't look like much but you can see we've got a decent colour on the skewers and sort of wee charred bits around the edge without taking it too far over. It's key that you don't take it over, pork will dry out uh, if you go too far, so remember 68. Um, I've got the sauce in there, and the peppers, my 
bit of bread has fallen to pieces. Um, but it is, it's all contained, tasty as, charred peppers, one of my favourite things. Uh, we'll come back out to the normal one. So guys, I'm going to go get the family fed. Uh, if you can't get dry yeast, try bakery for fresh yeast and use three times the amount of dried. Never tried uh, using fresh yeast before. Good one lad, I'll go and lay up now. So you had the right idea, Leon. You sit and watch it all, figure out a plan, then go for it. Stomach Tracker, nice one. Cheers, James. Stevie G, good man. Right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I was a little bit nervous about doing a cook live. I think it all went okay. Hopefully, it wasn't too long for you either. And the ones that cooked along, hopefully, it tasted good. Uh, again, let me know what you thought of it. So, I will speak to you again soon. The burger that the chicken burger that didn't win i do plan on doing that at some point as one of these live cook-ons as well so i just need to try and figure out when it is but thanks for tuning in guys i will uh, see you in the next stream